Okay, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Dave's haircut. As requested by some of you, what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna do a feather cut. So we're looking at really like a, like a mod style kind of haircut, uh, very choppy, very textured. Uh, we're gonna use a hair razor. So we're not really gonna be using scissors as much as um, you could in a haircut like this, but the whole haircut could be completed with a hair razor. Any kind of hair razor would do. This is called a slider. It's got a basic kind of attachment that kind of holds the razor in place, all right? Um, so obviously we're in lockdown. Um, we've got basic equipment going on here. Obviously we've got a stand, uh, a blockhead. Um, we've got a top video person, which is my daughter. And together we're gonna just try to kind of crack out a haircut for you guys to follow, all right? Um, so Dave is obviously looking for a new trim. Um, we started by sectioning the hair into two zones, really. So we've got the top zone, pinned up into like a horseshoe shape and then we've got the um, sides and back all kind of let down all right this haircut could be done either like a square layered haircut or a rounded layered haircut so we're going to connect it with a rounded feel to it um, a bit of a fringe um, and then we're going to go through the whole sides and back um, we're going to go through and eliminate a lot of the length and then we'll go around and personalize it and add some texture to it as well okay standard really we're going to go for a 90 degree angle okay so 90 degree angle vertical panel sections no thicker than about an inch um, and then we'll follow our guideline quite successfully all right brilliant okay most important aspect of this haircut is obviously to do it on wet all right any hair razor needs to be done on wet hair simply just to make sure you don't damage it okay it can be quite a brutal experience can be a little bit uncomfortable for the customer but most importantly it will damage the hair all right so we're gonna come in and collect our vertical section using our fingers pointing up just so we can make sure we can connect it quite well. We're gonna pull that out at a 90 degree angle and then we're gonna to start to establish the length, all right? So what we wanna do is actually when we're using the razor is come down on it to take away some of the length and then come into it to soften it. So we're gonna come out at a 90 degree angle. I wanna leave some of this length at the bottom. So we're just gonna come in nice and gentle, use the razor and start to take out that excess length. All right, it can make quite a horrible sound, so just be prepared for that. We're gonna come back and personalize that in a second. That gives us a little bit of a guideline, so we can take a little bit of that guideline, add that to a new fresh piece of hair. Same principle, pull it out, collect it, find your guideline which is sitting in that area, and raise the rest of that hair out to keep it a nice, soft, textured feel to the aspect of the haircut. Right, we're just going to turn the blockhead around slightly. Now we're going to connect in just behind the back of the ear. Same principle. Nice vertical sections. Pull out. Gather. Find your guideline, which you can just about see. You may not be able to see it on the camera so well, but if I pull that out, you'll see what we're in roughly the right place, okay? Haircuts like this do not need to be exactly precise. It is all about being a bit creative. So don't worry too much if it's really not 100% accurate. It's about making sure it's balanced and even, but don't panic about it being precise. Collect, find your guide, razor out. The razor is just sliding through the hair. Not too much pressure. And then we can just start to work that back into the back section. So up, in, collect. I'm using my fingers and thumbs to connect. There's another way I'll show you in just a second, but ultimately it is about trying to connect that hair quite well. So you could come in with a section similar to that and do it in this way. It can be sometimes a little bit less accurate, but it doesn't really matter which kind of method you use really. So again, method, one, I guess, compared to method two, which is much more of a pick and collect method. So using your fingers and your thumbs more. As long as you're pulling it out at a 90 degree angle, it achieves the same thing. So it's gonna be down to you guys to make sure you're comfortable. So we've worked through the side section into the back. We're now gonna work down into the nape area. So we're gonna follow that section down Pull out. I'm going to leave a little bit of length at the bottom. I want it to be quite soft, so more of a 90 degree approach. 
Uh, you can just start to see how that starts to feather into the neckline. So we're going to control that hair all the way around. All right, demonstrating both methods. So there's another one. We're going to keep it quite methodical. So we'll connect this bottom section whilst we're in that area. Try to keep your sections clean. If the hair stays nice and damp, that's going to be an easier thing to control. So collect guideline. It's a visual kind of guideline. All right, and then drop it. Nice, kind of soft. Continue that process all the way around. So we're doing a little bit more and then we'll just speed up the video so we can get cracking onto the haircut. So we're just gonna pull that out. Section by section. You know, how long should this haircut kind of take you to do? Any kind of technical creative haircut. From start to finish, you're probably looking at about an hour realistically. All right. It's really, really important to make sure that when you're using any kind of razor work, that is a new blade, obviously from a health and safety aspect, and to ensure that the haircut is going to be achieved with minimal um, discomfort to the customer. Any got a damaged old blade is going to be an uncomfortable cutting experience. You can see this cuts through quite easily, really, and it's, it should do. It shouldn't be an uncomfortable experience for the customer at all, really. So, yeah, okay, cool. We're we'll just checking. It's fine. So now we're just going to spin that around. You can just start to see really that there's an element of kind of complementing the shape of the head really. Although it's kind of at a 90 degree angle, we'll still give it a slightly kind of graduated effect, I guess. It's really important to leave all those lengths there. That's the kind of softness that complements towards that kind of mod kind of haircut really. Haircuts like this were very popular back in the 70s and 80s, but also making a bit of a comeback. And it's just nice to see an alternative haircut, really. I guess the world is so used to doing short haircuts. But after we come out of lockdown, people might have a slightly different spin on it, really. So it might be nice to have a couple of extra ideas in your toolbox that you can use for your customers as they come back in with probably longer haircuts than they left you with. So yeah, nice and gentle. Visually just checking the balance, making sure that it's obviously kind of connected and not longer on one side. We can double check that balance in a minute anyway, but that's okay. We're good with that. So we're just going to keep spinning around. Come around to this side. All right, again, I'm just visually looking for my guide. When the haircut is quite dark, in colour can sometimes be a little bit more challenging to see guidelines but in fairness we're good all right just a little bit more health and safety when using the razor obviously just make sure that is all connected properly you do not want your razor to be exposed or your blade to be exposed in any way obviously that's when you can cut a finger or have a slip or have an issue so we've just got to make sure that that Razor you're using is always safety first. All right, and so again, just visually checking out how that's gonna look. It's good. All right, so we're just gonna keep pivoting around. It's the same principle, same process. 90 degrees, pull out from the head. Find your guide visually. Remove the excess length. Rotate those sections. We're using the vertical sections. Obviously you could have done horizontal sections, it's kind of similar end kind of process, but I'm quite comfortable using a vertical section pattern. Just kind of lost a little bit in there, so we're just gonna go back in and make sure we haven't got that kind of random bit. I bet you can see that now, look, there he is, and there he is, and there he is. Just gonna get rid of that slightly. We'll cross-check it in a second, so you'll be able to see how that kind of pans out from a cross-checking aspect. I guess what we're kind of thinking of when you're doing a haircut like this is to make sure that you've got a couple of things covered, all right? So first things first, make sure every section you're taking is no kind of wider than your comb. So kind of an inch 
It's hugely important as well to make sure that you're not over directing anything. So for instance, if I'm taking a section like this, let's just get a little bit of water on it. Isn't it? So very important to make sure you keep your balance. If I'm pulling a section out like this, it's got to be pulled out on its section. All right. So hopefully you can see that. If I just spin the blockhead around, this is what I mean by on its section. It's on its section. You're not over directing it one way or the other. In doing that over directing, it's going to be longer, shorter, or longer, shorter, whichever way you're pulling it. So if you're not careful, you start to over direct, you'll chuck the balance out, you'll lose your guideline. So it has to be on its section, always. And for you, when you're cutting it, it's really important to make sure that you are parallel to your sections. So you don't want to be too far off. You want to be making sure that you are literally standing directly opposite each section you're taking. That way, you're going to get much better end control <coughs> and much better balance. All right, so inch size sections, vertical, on its section, parallel, no over direction. Keep that in mind when you're doing any form of layered haircut. Same principle would apply if you were just doing a standard short back and sides or any kind of layered look really. Okay. Now you can see why, well you can see which kind of position I'm holding my fingers. Some barbers and hairdressers will come out like this. Now that's absolutely fine, you can do that. The fear is though, because there's this gap here, hair will fall out, so just watch what happens. Hair can easily drip out of the fingers. If you're holding your fingers up in that area, no, no fear of that happening. So it's kind of like curving your back into that kind of whole cutting aspect. But it will mean that you are then able to connect, control, and make sure you don't drop hair as you're cutting. It's just drying out a little bit, so I'm gonna put a little bit more water on in a minute, but you just see I missed a little bit down there, so let's get rid of that. Okay, a little bit more water on that side section here. All right, so again, going back to what we said at the beginning, make sure you keep the hair nice and damp throughout the haircut. If you get it so it's dried out, you'll find that it will damage the hair really quickly. Not only that, it can be quite uncomfortable. There's my guides here, hopefully, Bosch. In about there, yeah? It's a nice. Right, now we've got to be a little bit careful here to make sure that we get the balance quite correctly. We should have, because we follow the principle of methodical working. So as long as the head position is not changed too much, we should end up with a fairly even kind of length. But I'll tell you what we might do to start with, right? Let's just have a quick look at this. Now we kind of have a look at that. We're kind of about there. So let's just check roughly. We're in the same kind of position. Yeah, look at that. I'm quite happy with that. All right then, so hopefully you can have a little kind of sneaky pre-run to make sure you're not far off track before you commit to cutting the hair and then realize that you've cut one side way shorter than the other side, yeah? So just a little bit of a pre-sneaky kind of check will help you make sure that you're all right with that. All right then. So nice. Last one really at the front. So we're just going to pull that again out at a 90 degree angle. All right, comb and collect. Make sure you've got good tension really. It's going to be worth having decent tension to get that control. And that way then you shouldn't be far off. Right then, okay. Moment of choice, yeah? Choice, moment of truth rather. Let's just check we've got a decent balance. Hopefully my video person can see. Ooh, we're slightly off. Not much though, but slightly off on this right-handed side here. So we'll just take that a little bit shorter in there really. Just on that top length. All right. So hopefully we've got that now pretty even, pretty accurate, which it is. So you can cross check this haircut quite happily by doing this. Take horizontal line, pull it out, and just check you've got a pretty decent connection, all right? So you can do that around the whole haircut. So through the back, horizontal line, pull out, 
check you've got a pretty decent balance. Pull out, check you've got a good balance. It is marginally longer in this side actually. So we're just gonna go back in and just take that tiny bit more out of here. I don't think it's much longer, but it's worth just double checking. Okay, that's all right. A little bit of a cross check on the horizontal. All right, so we're just gonna have another quick look, make sure we're all right. So a little bit. So we're gonna go back in there slightly and just see where we can reduce some of that top layer slightly. That could have been just because I dropped my 90 degree angle slightly and my sections may have been just slightly bigger, but it's pretty good. And again, like we said, with this particular haircut, we're not necessarily looking at everything being perfect. It's kind of better that it's not really. All right, so fundamentally, shape's in place, all right? So whilst we're up the back, we're just gonna detail in this perimeter line. And we don't want it to be too perfect. So we're gonna freehand technique around this bottom perimeter area. So we're looking at kind of connecting some balance. You guys can see already that this and this is pretty even, but there's a bit in the middle we wanna kind of resolve already. So again, freehand, pick up, just gently nibble off, excess length, very carefully. All right, just to kind of give it a little bit of softness. All right, any little random strands, we can just nibble them away. All right, it's a little bit longer on this side and almost slightly kind of heavier really. So we're just gonna do that. And just take that a little bit shorter in there. Now you've got to be very careful with haircuts like this when you're dealing with people with strong nape whirls. I mean, anything with a really strong nape whirl could present problems. The haircut won't necessarily lie quite as flat as you would like, really. All right, so we're just gonna go around using that now as our kind of guide in this area and just level this up, really. All right, so realistically, you can make your life a lot easier for yourself now and actually just go back into using a pair of scissors. It would probably be quicker and easier rather than picking up and doing little nibbles with your razor. But we want to try to complete most of the haircut by using just a razor. Just to show you something slightly different, Something slightly kind of new, really. All right, so visually, check, 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 check. Nibble, nibble. A tiny bit more on this side here, look. So we're just gonna go in with there. Nibble that out. See, you could have just done this in about five seconds with a pair of scissors, but let's stay true. All right, then I think I'm quite comfortable with that. I don't wanna kind of, it perfect. All right, so that's got that kind of texture, that softness, all right? So now you've got to think about the actual length's pretty good, but if you wanted to, you could just take out some of that extra bulk, really. You could do that in different ways. One of the best ways is just by picking up a section, and this time not cutting the length, but just cutting the internal aspect. Just a nibble way through to take out some of that bulk. The most important thing to do is make sure that you're not doing it too close to the roots, Otherwise you're gonna find little short bits are gonna stick out all over the place. And just little gentle kind of touches on where you think there's excess bulk. And you may wanna just take a little bit more of that weight out. So instead of cutting it on the outer areas, you're cutting it internally. Creating that little bit more softness. Just check that through. See what's coming out, hardly any, but enough to make a bit of a difference really. So we're just gonna go through Take a little bit of that weight out. Make sure we're comfortable with it. Obviously you can kind of wear it in a much more textured manner, get a bit of product on, we can do all that later. We're just gonna come through now and just randomly take a little bit out. Bosh, not too much kind of worry about it. I see blockheads, look, they all grow that way slightly, so it's always gonna be difficult to get that to lie flat. We'll whack a bit of product on later, it'll be all right. All right, a little bit more softness through here. So we're just gonna take that up, internally remove the weight. All right, try to stay kind of true to your 90 degree angle so it does stay balanced. All right, gonna put a little bit more softness through this front section here slightly. 
Ooh. See how much is coming out? That's fine. I might even kind of just take a little bit more of that around the ear out, really. Give it a little bit more of a moddy kind of feel to it, really. All right, so I'm just going to take a tiny bit more of this out, disconnect it slightly even. So we've got that kind of a little bit more of a separation in there, I reckon. Get a little bit of a blend going through there, just kind of make sure that connects a little bit. But I reckon that could be quite cool, really. We'll leave it like that. Okay, onto the other side, remembering what we've just done. So we're just gonna to continue to move a little bit of the bulk out internally. All right, we're just gonna have a little bit of a nibble around this ear. Take a tiny bit more of this out. Get that kind of a little bit more going on really. Tiny bit more in there maybe. Turns into kind of quite a visual kind of haircut really. So we want that Almost slightly disconnected, a little bit longer here, a bit short around the ear, so we're good to go with that, I think. Okay, brilliant, we're going to move on to the top. Okay, for the next part then, what we're trying to do now is we're going to connect the back and the sides in with the top, all right? To make it easier for you guys to understand how we're going to work through the top, I've kind of split it into kind of three other zones. You could do this anyway, it does make a lot of sense. So I've kind of isolated the front bit for the fringe, pinned that out of the way really, we'll come back to that later, all right? Still working within our horseshoe, I've just sectioned off that middle bit so I can work on this crown bit, okay? So we've cut all of this underneath section, we're good. We've got our guidelines which are in place around the back of the crown. Now we've got to get from the crown, from the back of the sort of head over the crown into the top so we can start to connect, all right? So realistically what we've got to think about is how we're going to connect this all together, okay? So like we said, realistically you could either go for a square layer kind of feel to it which would keep obviously a lot of the weight in through here or you can go for a bit more of a rounded kind of connection point so we're going to go for a rounded connection point okay which is then pivoting across the top of the head to round or square depending on what you want to do square is going to leave a lot more heaviness to the top all right so vertically working across the crown section this out of the way for control try to find our guideline which is underneath you should be able to spot it if I pull it up. So it's kind of there. All right, so we want to make sure that we are now, if I come around maybe this way, might be a bit easier. So if I come over like that, you can see the guide here, we're connecting that, all right? So realistically, to struggle our fingers down through a little bit, and then we're gonna take this out. All right, so that's gonna give us a connection over the crown area. What you need to remember when you're connecting the crown is you're still pulling it at a 90 degree angle from the curve of the head. That gives you that kind of connection part. And then it can be pivoted then around to connect. So we're gonna now go next door to that section, find our guideline from underneath. Should be able to spot it quite easily. There he is. All right, guideline from back, all right. 90 degrees, take that excess off, all right, so we're good, see this last little bit here to connect, so we're going to come down like that, cross the head, connection point here from what we've cut from just now, connection point from the back here, so which is what we've got going on, and we can get rid of that, and now we've got a really nice curve around the head, which is then connecting the back and the sides and the top together. Do the same principle on this side. Pull up, you don't really need a section that big. I think I'm being a little bit in my section. So let's get that one nice and clean. Don't wanna let that down. Collect and sort of comb and collect. Up, guide from the back. Got a little guide there. So we're just gonna go through, take that off. All right, so it's gonna be a bit tricky because I need to kind of jump this side a little bit, sorry. Camera leading, up, there we go, beautiful, there's the last little bit going on there, take that off, there's a little bit in here, look, rub that in the mix, take that off, oh, go that way, just drop that about a bit, oh, check the balance, good, 
Good, a little bit longer that side. So just go in horizontally like we did just now. You'll see, and I'm happy to show you. A little bit shorter there, it's a little bit longer. <clears throat> it's important to check that balance. It might be that you just go back in there. Take a little bit of that out. You must check that, make sure that balance is good. So again, just pull out that side and that side. Good, 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 good. Visually check it. All right. So now we've just got that kind of like nice curve. If I turn this to the side, you'll see really nice curve to the back of the head here. All right. So that gives us then a guide that we can follow through from the top. So we've gone from here to here on the curve rather than the square. 90 degrees from the head and then obviously just taking that excess length off all right if you wanted to just soften that back through again a little bit some people quite use, like using the technique which is more of a combing so you could just get your razor gently comb down you'll probably just see little bits coming off gotta be a tiny bit careful don't want to go too crazy just filtering that out but remember if you want to take a little bit more of that bulk out just come in on the internal part Take a little bit of that bulk out. Add that texture if you want to. It's all right, just to kind of flop a bit through. Jobs are good. All right, happy with that then. So next bit, through to the top, all right? You'll see what I mean by, if we just pull that up slightly. So we should be able to see, that's the new piece. And that's the original guide that we created from the back of the crown, all right? So remember again, on the curve, back of the crown, that. So we've got to connect this and this together now. So we can do that by just taking a little section of that underneath bit that will hopefully give us a, a guide. Pull that up. Let's just have a little look around, all right? So we can see it's there, okay? So there's kind of a couple of ways you can do this. You can do this from the undercut. to connect some people quite like that method or another way you can kind of do that take the whole section all right nip it together put it back and go from that way so you can either go kind of up or that way we'll do it again so you can kind of see the options right okay we're going to take a tiny bit more of that top section Exclude that bit because we don't want that. All right, then we're just going to literally pick up on some of that previous section we've just cut to act as a guide. All right, trying to keep your sections clean, really. That's the whole point of the haircut. Pull up, let's just do a little recce. You can see that there's your guide, there's the bit we need to connect. So, again, option number one if you wanted to pull it together, cut that center bit out from the kind of up motion or come and kind of come in more like that. Kind of a bit more of a fan of that, I think, to be honest with you. All right then. Now we've got to connect across to the sides, all right? So if I just spin that around, so we go in here, we need to now connect this. So now we need to go here. So what we're gonna do is just take a section like this. We need to pick up on the sum of that underneath section we've cut and some of that top bit we've cut. Hopefully, you should be able to see the two connection points and then the bit in the middle we need to get shot of. All right, so you will have a connection point because you've cut that bit, connection point because you've cut that bit, and a rounded haircut will be cut on the curve. So it's important to get that connection. So we'll do it on this side so you'll be able to see. A little bit more water in the mix. All right, so here we go. Across the curve of the head, isolate some of that front part. Make sure you pick up on some of the underneath and some of the top. Got it, underneath, got it, top, bit in the middle that needs to come out. All right. So again, just check it. A little bit more that could come out there, look. All right. Okay, good. All right, we're going to carry on with that principle. All right, so a bit from the top. If I come around this way, then it's easier for you to video it. Right, so come across the top. Get rid of. 
pull back, connect with some of the back section, pull up, find your guide, isolate and remove right, any random bits. On the curve, coming across, connect with the sides, find your two guide points. There we are in the middle, that's the bit that needs to come off. And on this side, same principle. Bit in the middle needs to come off. Shortest point to shortest point is what we always call it. And then you get that connection. And keep wandering all the way to the front until you've achieved all what you need to achieve to remove that length from the top. Now there's lots of different things you could do now. So what I'm going to kind of do in a minute Start to think about a little bit of over direction so we can keep that front a little bit longer. So you'll see in a second what I mean by the over direction. Alright, make sure you can really see that though. It's important that you get this bit. Right, so up. Shortest point sides, shortest point top, bit in the middle. That's the excess bit you're going to get rid of. That's the bit that creates that rounded haircut. Remember we could have gone square. If we went square, we'd have to pull that all the way up. But we're not, we're going around it so we can get rid of that. You can see most of what I'm doing now turns into almost a bit of visual freehand. So I'm not really going to be overly stressed about the connection as long as the balance is alright. So what we're going to do now at this front bit is just take that section. We'll over direct this back slightly. I want to keep that fringe quite long. So what we'll do in a second Started to drag that back a little bit. That whole over direction aspect of this part of the haircut will enable me to keep a little bit more heaviness with that front. I don't want it to be too short, really. All right, then, so we're just going to connect that bit to that bit. Let's get rid of that clip a minute and put that in my pocket. Obviously, not very professional, but we're in lockdown and I'm at home. So, up and up. Shortest point to shortest point, slight over directional feel to it. Remove that on this side. Up connection, sides and top, shortest point, shortest point, over direct slightly. Get rid of some of that. Okay, cool. I'm just spin it around so you can now start to see what the plan is. We've got to connect that now with this front part. There's loads of different ways you can do this. With your customer, it's going to be really important to kind of go, okay, so how would we like to kind of design that whole fringe part? I'm going to keep it really quite heavy. Now I've got options really. We could go for a very blunt fringe, which is obviously quite in, or we could go for more of a sweepy kind of fringe, which is a little bit more kind of slight asymmetrical number, I think. So I'm going to go for a bit of a sweepy kind of fringe on this one. It really would depend on growth patterns, hair density, the thickness of your hair, how much fringe your customer's got to play around with. So you're gonna to have to work that out with your customer really. But I'm gonna go for a little bit more of a, I reckon a bit more of a sweepy fringe, but which way are we gonna go? I don't really like that way, so let's go that way. Right, so this is gonna be a bit more creative in that sense. It would be too easy if I'm honest, just to go and go cut a nice blunt fringe in, although that would look really cool. Let's give it a little bit of flavour, all right? So let's go for a sweeping fringe. I want it to be shorter to longer, okay? So what we're going to do, we're going to take a diagonal section, pull all of that fringe over to this side, all right? Here, I have a connection point from the side section. I'm going to use that as a guide. I'm going to cut that off. By over-directing it will mean that this bit will be shorter and that bit will stay longer, all right? So let's just stay with it and see what happens. There's my guide, it's in there. I'm gonna now use my slider and get rid of all of that. Cutting at a kind of a diagonal section, all right? I know it's gonna be longer on this side because of the over-direction. We'll get rid of that in a minute. It's gonna be really heavy. We can bulk that out in a minute. So now we've got that kind of sweepy fringe feel to it. So I'm quite comfortable with that. 
I'm just going to take a little bit of the bulk out of it. I'm just going to slide the razor down through quite casually. Just take a little bit of that bulk out. A little bit more bulk out of here. Now realistically, you don't want to take too much of this bulk out until you've dried it and seen exactly how it's going to fall. So that would be my next plan. I'm going to dry it and then see how that falls, all right? Personalization comes next. Really, any personalization you want to do when you've styled it. I'm just going to come and take a little bit more of that weight out of there, there a second. So here we can just see that bit and that bit. There's a bit in the middle we want to just connect. So watch what I do here, look, bring that out. That bit's from the sides, that bit's from the fringe. That whole bit in the middle, we do need to get shot of just because otherwise we will have a disconnected feel. All right, so now you can see that balance is much better. All right, so what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna draw it in, and then I'm gonna come through, personalize it. All right, cool. Joining us on the back end of the dry. Styling and drying is obviously quite a simple process, really. You can have the hair dryer full power, just medium heat. Position it where you want it to be positioned. Add that texture if you want to. Lots of power dry. And then when you're happy with the actual end result, the last thing to do is just to go around and personalise. Okay, so all we're doing now is we're just checking the finer detail parts, right? Any little personalisation. I've already spotted a bit whilst I've been drying that doesn't connect between that and that, so that's going to be removed in a bit. Quite happy with the fringe, although I'm going to just slice a little bit of the weight out using our slide and razor. Fairly happy with the rest of it. We've got our nice little bit of disconnection work going around the ear. All right, so we've got a really nice texture through the back, which is what the razor's done, just by giving it that little bit of softness. Uh, remembering to go kind of vertical, internal, just to take out the weight. Good balance on the crown, we're really happy with that. And again, just a nice little bit of kind of detail around the ears, all right? So I'm gonna take a little bit of the weight out through here, reduce that just to connect, add a bit of product, and I think we're good to go. So we will just start by doing this little bit here. So earlier on we said how important it is to use a razor on wet hair so it doesn't damage it. Now it's fine to use a razor for just small detail and personalization at the end of the haircut, as you're not really going to damage the hair too much. All right. The only other thing I forgot to mention whilst we're doing the haircut is the angle you use your kind of razor at. Really important to recognize that if you're using a razor, you don't want to put it in at a 90 degree angle and try to scratch it. You really want that razor to connect with the hair at a 45 degree angle so it glides more. So less scratching and more gliding, all right? So just really look at the angle you're holding at so that would be incorrect. It's not really gonna cut, it's just gonna scratch it. This would be much more correct. So from a 90, half of 90, 45, and glide it through. So that gliding 45 degree angle is the contact of the razor when you're doing your haircut. Just this last little bit here then. So we're just gonna connect that and that. So we're gonna go shortest point to shortest point. We're going to come in with a razor at a slight angle. So we're going to come in at that angle to complement the fact that we've got this sweeping fringe. Just take that little bit out. All right, better to do it slowly and get it right rather than to rush it and ruin it. So we're quite comfortable with that. All right, and we will just snip out a little bit of this weight. So just individually pick up some bits and just Razor out a little bit of that weight. Still got a little bit in there, look, so we get that off. Just a tiny bit there. All right, that's cool. Not gonna really, really work much more through the fringe, quite happy, a little bit of weight in there maybe, we'll just slide that out. So this part of the haircut is all visual. It's just you looking and checking, altering bits, get your customer involved if they're happy to be involved. I guess realistically, I'm happy with that, all right? So predictably, we could have gone with a very blunt straight fringe that would have made it much more of a sort of like a moddy kind of look, bit of a Paul Weller kind of look to it really, I guess. However, 
We've just gone for a little bit more of a softer sweeping, slightly over directed fringe, which gives it that kind of sweepy kind of feel really, okay? Last thing to do then, if we're happy, check the balance. Just pull out, check, pull out, check, pull out, check. Visually check it, just pull out and check it. Make sure we're all good with the balance, which we are. All right, add a little bit of product. Uh, you could use a little bit of, um, bit of wax. We'll pop a bit of powder in. We're not gonna put too much in because it's a blockhead and the hair is quite coarse. So it's got that texture to it already. If your customer had finer hair though, it'd be nice to add a little bit of something to it. So we're just gonna lift the hair up, place product, work it in. Not too much in this case. Finer hair would probably need a bit more product application to it. I'm not gonna mess around with it too much, it's looking quite good really. All right, maybe a tiny bit through the fringe. Watch your customer's eyes, obviously, clearly. And then what we'll do is we'll knock it in with a little bit of spray. I really need too much really, but we'll put a bit through. Again, obviously if this was a customer, you'd be protecting the eyes. Whack a bit of texture through there. Compliment that sweepy kind of fringe. Maybe a bit through the back. Quite comfortable with that, the way it's looking already though, to be fair. So we're good. I think we've complemented that overall shape really well. We've got a lovely profile, curved, rounded. A lot of softness through the back. Not too feminine, because it's a guy, obviously. You could do a haircut like this on a lady, not a problem. It's very a versatile haircut, really. There's no reason why you couldn't do it on a guy or a lady, really. And we're good to go. All right then, so Dave's haircut's completed. Really nice razor cut, just using the razor only, no scissors involved. And at this stage, haircut's complete. Thank you.